the Jewish community sees a person from their own community in the Ontario legislature standing up against hate every single day who has the support of a premier who has called it out. Where are the other levels of government today who who exercise the same voice that Premier Ford does that we will not accept anti-Semitism. We have accepted it. Where's the, where's the prosecution? Again, this is something you could ask Minister Varani, you can ask the Prime Minister. Ask the, the province, the province prosecutes. The province prosecutes. Better save your boss. Well, I'm back in the studio now. I'm still wearing my Rebel sweatshirt. I normally don't do that when I do my show, but I thought I would keep with it since I was on the street this way. I had a very interesting time out there. The most useful part was scrumming Michael Kersner, the local member of the provincial parliament, who's a solicitor general. If you don't know what the solicitor general does, they're basically the boss of police and prisons. That's the main part of it. And with the attorney general, that's sort of the law and order part of our government. And for him to say, well, it's the it's that guy's fault or it's that guy's fault. Not really, boss. It's up to you. I was disappointed in him, but I'll give him credit. He actually showed up and he actually talked to me. How come there were no charges under Section 176.2 of the criminal code besetting a house of worship when all those protesters were outside the Bayat Synagogue in Thornhill? Well, that's a question that you're going to have to ask the York Regional Police or the Attorney General. I'm here because I'm not going to see my community intimidated. I speak out all the time in support of our Jewish community. I'm not afraid to wear my kippah. I'm not afraid to go to synagogue every uh, every Sabbath, every Shabbat. And I'm going to do everything that I can to stand up for uh, our inherent right to live safely in our own homes and communities. And I'm not going to stop. Everything's short of prosecuting them though, right? I mean, the U of T remains encamped with an illegal encampment. You're very good on Twitter, but have you actually done any prosecutions? Well, again, this is something that you have to speak to the Attorney General. He's your colleague. You're in the government. Why, why should... You're on the inside. No, what I can tell you is I'm working every day to You're tweeting every day that our legislation, that our regulations are adhered to. I'm standing up with my community. I've been 34 weeks, almost every single week, to the rally at Bathurst and Shepherd in support of remembering the hostages who have been held against their will in captivity in Gaza, and it's not acceptable. Well, and that's it, exactly and that's exactly it, why. It obviously is acceptable since you're not prosecuting it. You have condoned it. You've created a new normal where people can engage in low-level, permanent anti-Semitic crimes, assault, threats, mischief, because you guys don't prosecute. But there you are on Twitter, though, so congrats for that. It's important that the Jewish community sees a person from their own community in the Ontario legislature standing up against hate every single day who has the support of a premier who has called it out. Where are the other levels of government today who who exercise the same voice that Premier Ford does that we will not accept anti-Semitism. We have accepted it. Where's Where's the prosecution? Again, this is something you could ask Minister Varani, you can ask the Prime Minister. The, the province, the province prosecutes. The province prosecutes. Better save your boss. Whereas the MP, the member of the federal parliament, Yara Sachs was nowhere to be found. Just incredible. One more thing, Olivia Chow, the NDP mayor of Toronto, showed up. She was heckled and booed, but I'll give her credit. She showed up and she read some slightly mollifying words. Even if you can't take them seriously, she was there to say them. I'd like to call on Mayor Olivia Chow to join us and share powerful words about these moments in our community. What for? What for? Hey, hey, be quiet. Shut him up. Be quiet. Be quiet. You shut up. You don't do it. 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 Joining us now to talk about the politics of the day is one of my favorite people who was there standing near me, right next to me, and we're delighted to have a catch-up with her via Skype. You know who I'm talking about, Sue Ann Levy, 
who is with our friends at True North. And she's a little bit of a troublemaker like I am. Sue Ann, great to see you again. Nice to see you and your aura. Uh, <laughs> just... I was standing near you. Your aura pervaded my soul. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was a little bit rainy, so maybe that's what, what you were actually yeah. sensing. It was rainy there, but uh, I didn't count the people. It was well over 100. It might have even mm -hmm. been more. They actually shut the road down. There were so many people there. Um, give me your thoughts on who was there. There were provincial conservatives. There were some city councilors. There were no. F there was one federal MP who was an independent. Let mm -hmm. me cork it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the day because, like me, you're a journalist, but also like me, you're Jewish, so you have a little bit of skin in the game when a Jewish girl school mm -hmm. gets shot up. Go ahead. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, only one federal MP showed up. Uh, independent Kevin Vuong, who has been absolutely. Uh, so supportive of the Jewish community and so on point with his comments. But, you know, as you will say and have said, your own MP, Yara Sachs, who doesn't live that far from the scene of the school, didn't show up at all. Um, I, I don't get this woman. I don't get what's going on. And, you know, not one liberal MP showed up to actually represent the federal government. Uh, you know, no wonder anti-Semitism has just skyrocketed in, in Canada and in Toronto. We've got politicians like like our federal MPs and then, of course, our dear mayor, who did show up, yes, mumbled a few platitudes, but, you know, they were all grossly ironic, as you probably felt as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking about being entitled to be safe in Toronto when she and her council created the conditions under which we now live in Toronto. This morning, the chief and I uh, visited the administrator and the principal, Rabbi Vidal, and Angelo, who have been keeping the school safe. You tell me this is a place for a lot of joyous learning with young children and a place to deepen their understanding of the Jewish culture and faith, a place to learn math, science, history. And I immediately thought about my grandkids. I have grandkids about the same age that goes to a elementary school. This is a place where girls can learn about themselves, get back to the community and have fun growing up. These students have a right to learn. Their teachers have a right to teach and say the umbrella over the top of the microphone. A sign from God! Okay, okay. 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 There was a um, motion brought forward at city council, and, and one of the city councilors was talking about that. I think his name is James Pasternak. That would provide right. a kind of bubble zone around mm -hmm. uh, schools and places of worship. My own point of view on that is that those are not necessary. Section 176.2 of the criminal code already bans disturbing religious worship. So that's already in the criminal code. We don't need new laws. Mm -hmm. If someone's mm -hmm. harassing a place of worship, which is, could be a synagogue, could be a church, could even be a religious school, that's already there. What we're lacking is not more words on paper, in my view. We're lacking the political will to do something about it. And that's what rang hollow to me. You got Mayor Olivia Chow, you got all these provincial government politicians, including the Solicitor General. Oh, we must do more. This isn't, isn't who we are. But... Other than just mouthing those platitudes, they're not actually using the instruments of the state. And I'm not looking for censorship, and I'm not looking for, you know, new laws. Just can you do me a favor and arrest people who are trespassing, committing mischief, uttering death threats, supporting terrorist groups? All of those things right now are already crimes, and all of them are being winked at by the authorities. I knew this was going to happen, though, Ezra, because year after year, before I left the Toronto Sun, I was covering Al Quds and the hate that was spewed on the seats, city uh, streets of Toronto. Al Quds, that's uh, the annual yeah. Iran hate fest. Yeah, uh, it's basically an anti-Semitic day that Iran hosts oh, it in in Toronto every year. It's hugely anti-Semitic, and I, you know, would stand there and listen to these tropes being thrown out, and police never 
did anything. The politicians would stumble over themselves to talk about, you know, not having hate on the streets of Toronto and nothing was ever done. And of course, now it's escalated. And, uh, you know, it's lovely to hear all these fine words. And we heard them from every level of government. We well, except for the feds, of course, because they didn't show. Uh, but we heard them from the province and we heard them from uh, city councillors. And I have to hand it to James Pasternak. He's been wonderful in trying to fight anti-Semitism for years and years and years because um, I was at City Hall, of course, for so many years. But, uh, you know, they don't give the police the tools to make arrests. And, of course, you've got the courts that, of course, turn around and let these people out on bail or not bail or no bail. Um, but there are no consequences for this kind of hate. And I don't think a police really understand the idea of hate and what a hate crime is. But clearly they've been uh, displayed many, many times on this. When you stalk a synagogue, when you stalk a Jewish place of business, when you uh, harass Jews, when you tell Jews they can't come into a public space, an encampment at U of T, what do you call that? Yeah. What do you call that? Fighting yeah. genocide? No, you call that anti-Semitism yeah. in its purest form. Yeah. You know, I, I spoke briefly with Kevin Wong, that's that independent candidate, independent MP, mm -hmm. excuse me, who's talking with the Conservatives about running for them. And he reminded me that the Toronto area has 25 MPs. Like, it's the largest mm -hmm. city in Canada. And I think 24 out of those 25 are liberal. I, I don't want to get my stats wrong. You probably know that math better mm -hmm. than me. And they weren't there. Mm -hmm. And I kept on thinking, where's Yara Sachs? She's just been on such a weird bender lately of not attending oh. Jewish things. This was right near her home. I got back mm -hmm. to the office. I opened the Twitter machine and Yara Sachs was posting photos of herself, selfies at something called the Azerbaijani National Day. So mm -hmm. this Jewish school is four minutes from her house. Instead of going there, she drove an hour all the way down to Toronto City Hall and attended the National Day for Azerbaijan and tweeted about it, just a thumb in the eye to her own community. She mm -hmm. wouldn't, she she refused to attend the Israel National Day two weeks mm -hmm. ago. She's going to the Azerbaijani National Day. I got nothing against Azerbaijan, although it's a corrupt mm -hmm. country uh, that, that we have very little to do with. I find it insane that she would essentially brag to the community, ha ha, you suckers are there up at the Jewish school. I'm down here partying, partying with Azerbaijan. What is she thinking? Is, is this her way of saying I'm not running again? Is this her way of saying I can do what I want and I'm untouchable? Like, I think it's madness to not go to the hottest crime scene in the city in your neighborhood and then to mm -hmm. brag about being at some Azerbaijan party. By the way, Azerbaijan's population is 99% Muslim. No beef with it. I'm just saying, <laughs> what a weird juxtaposition. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, then you had Olivia Chow yesterday walking with a bunch of pride people and raising the pride flag in, in Mel Lassman Square a week early and walking on Saturday along the uh, new walkway on Hanlon's Point. And I'm thinking, you just had this shooting at a school and you're walking along a pride walkway. Um, it's all about votes. It's all about catering to the special interest groups they think will keep them in office, will keep, you know, that they want to keep happy. And it's not, as I tweeted yesterday, they have no moral compass, these people whatsoever. No moral compass. It's sad. It's disheartening to yeah. see what we see in Canada now. Yeah, yeah, I found it very frustrating, but I was glad to see you there this morning. And um, yeah. I wonder if anything will, will come of this. It's I don't know if these men will be these gunmen will be captured. I mean, the the security footage is grainy. It's dark out, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I mean, it look. I, what do I know about law enforcement? But it looks like a tough case to crack unless there's some other video footage. I think they're going to get away well, with it. Last word to you. They haven't. They haven't done so well so far. I mean, look at these people wear their little gefias, uh, their headscarves, and they cover their faces. And how how much has the police, how have the police been able to crack any of those people skewing hate? Huh. Uh, they feel enabled. They scream yeah. and shout downtown in Toronto. And they, they've been emboldened by our the lack of response 
Yeah. In this city and others. I just can't imagine the starker contrast the way the police have responded to them versus mm-hmm. the peaceful trucker convoy of two years ago. <laughs> you just couldn't have yeah. a more opposite. This is two tiered policing, which, by the way, destroys confidence in the police. Sue Ann, it's great to see you again. I was delighted to see you this morning. I should have known you'd be there. I was really glad to see you. And it was You've been getting up early. That's You've right. been getting up early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, the crowd was not pleased. I asked a lot of the folks in the crowd, where's Yara Sachs? And I, and I got very stern answers in every case. People know she's not on their side. Great to see you, my friend. You're on our side. Thank you. We love you for it. Yep, Take care. for sure. All right, that's Sue Ann Levy, who works for True North. Our friends over at TNC.news. Stay with us. More ahead. Shame on you, you censorious bug. 